Hello, I'm so excited to let you know that my new book on the vital nerves is available for you to purchase. Um, I actually receive them very shortly, so a lot of people have bought them, so I'll be sending them out very soon. My name is John Gibbons, and I am an osteopath, a lecturer for the Body Master Method, which runs face-to-face -face courses and online courses, and the vital nerves is now online, so you get the book as a PDF as part of that. I'm also an author and then this is the seventh book that I have written to date. I'm currently writing a book on spinal manipulation, the knee complex and also the cervical spine so please wish me luck. This is a sneak preview of my book so let's go. Now let's move on to, um, in fact I dedicate this book to all the students I have ever taught. Without you none of this would be possible so thank you yeah, for um, buying my books and attending my courses. I truly appreciate it. Um, these are some of the online courses I do, but moving on to the chapter. So the first one is all about anatomy of a nervous system, peripheral nervous system. Chapter three is where it starts to get interesting because it talk about the cervical and brachial plexus and also um, the branches. So I discuss all that. It also links to QR codes as well. So uh, if you don't understand the text, then you can use your phone and use uh, the QR code and scan it and it will take you to the videos on YouTube. Next is the lumbar sacral plexus, deep tendon reflexes known as the DTRs, um, sensory testing, the dermatomes, myotome testing. I talk about disc and its anatomy and conditions associated. Cervical spine is part of. Uh, I also discuss some neuropathies with the nervous system and some case studies and finally onto the neurodynamic testing. Uh, you can have a read of the introduction in your own time. This is the first chapter, so sort of the nervous system. I love this picture here. So my medical artist, so I naturally, uh, I find pictures, which obviously I can't use, so then I send them to my medical artist and then she redraws them, um, which is great. So um, we can then use them, but obviously it takes a lot of time yeah, to do that. So this is the nervous systems in its entirety here. But you can have a look at the intro and uh, the structure of the course. So the first chapter is more uh, text related, no, no QR codes for this one. It just basically talks about the difference between a nerve and a neuron. Yeah, and then you can see a typical neuron here. Um, moving on, different types of neurons, the structure of a nerve on this side. Same on this side here. Uh, the glial cells, which you can see, yeah, is all mentioned in this sort of area. When I talk about uh, the sodium potassium pumps and the action potential, yeah, and then how it works along here, the benefit of the myelin sheath, and so on. Okay, this is an interesting one also. This is like a synapse here. Um, you can see it. And then basically the space that forms is actually 1,000 times thinner than a piece of paper. So it's pretty remarkable here. And when we look at um, the neural supercomputer on its side, so some facts about neurons. Uh, there are 100 billion neurons within the brain, and then each neuron has these like um, uh, connectors, you know, which send signals to other areas, and these are known as the synapse. And there are between 1,000 and 10,000. So that means there's between 100 and 1,000 trillion synapses. That's just remarkable. And each of them like a little mini computer. That is truly amazing when you think about it. The peripheral nervous system. So I discuss that. I don't discuss too much about the cranial nerves because you can read about that in many other books. Um, so there's a little bit of information in there. And then I discuss the sensory and motor components. Um, the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic, which is part of what they call the autonomic. So again, you can read read about that all in here. Um, some lovely pictures again, discussing the differences, and you can have a look yeah between the two nervous systems yeah that one yeah along here between the parasympathetic and the sympathetic, and then you can see here the ganglia and how it all works yeah along there. I talk about the stress response. And you can have a, you know, whether you like it or not, just have a read and just see what you think. Because it's, uh, I talk about a caged animal somewhere. I'm just trying to think where that is. Um, yeah, but uh, 
it's in there somewhere you know it's, it's for 180 pages so I was just trying to find find it where I discuss that uh, differences between the SNS and the parasympathetic yes the sympathetic have a look now this is where it gets uh, into the nitty-gritty component so the cervical plexus along here and how it all works there's a point on this cervical spine called the herbs point in here so that's where they would um, anesthetize this area right, when they're doing any sort of like um, uh, investigations into the cervical spine yeah so we do like a nerve block the brachial plexus it comes from c5 6 7 c8 and t1 this is how it sort of exits this is how it looks on the body and then these are the qr codes so the brachial plexus i talk about it on a whiteboard i talk about it on powerpoint when i talk about the branches on a whiteboard and powerpoint so please have a look at them if you don't understand the concept uh, all the muscles um, each nerve supplies yeah along here like this is the radial nerve so this is one of the branches that exits uh, and you can see the medical artist has drawn the radial nerve and what it well where it goes and how it splits yeah into the digits the dorsal digital nerves along here the sensory of each so these are the motor supply this is the sensory component this is how you test the radial nerve and I do the same with the median nerve along here and the muscles it supplies in the hand called the loaf muscles the sensory and how you test the median nerve and then on the bottom right here there's a QR code for that the same with the ulnar nerve the same with the muscular cutaneous and the same with the auxiliary nerve along here QR codes for each of them uh, the lumbar plexus moving on yeah when I talk about I love these pictures in here yeah the sensory nerves well and some motor nerves yeah around the sort of area the chromasteric reflex in here, yeah, obviously on male. Um, uh, lateral femoral cutaneous nerve along this area, sensory loss. So I talk about that. The femoral nerve, which is the next one, you can see it drawn here, coming down the muscles that supplies, become the saphenous verse, supply sensation to the medial lower part of the uh, lower limb. Um, then I, we talk about the obturator nerve, which is mainly for the adductors yeah, on a sacral plexus along this region. Obviously, the sciatic nerve is part of that and its relationship to the piriformis muscle and where it goes down into the leg, becomes the tibial nerve, continues down into the tibial nerve, then it goes under the foot on this side to be called the medial and lateral plantar nerve. And then also the, um, the sciatic comes down and splits to the fibula nerve, which is on this side, also known as the uh, peroneal nerve. So you call I would call it the common fibula nerve, which is the main name or you can call it the common peroneal nerve along there moving on yeah so the case study along uh, well next will be and this is the gluteal nerve you can read about supplies the gluteal muscles and then inferior gluteal nerve for gluteus maximus this is the sural nerve which is a part of the tibial nerve and the fibular nerve yeah the sensory uh, this is the case study I talk about uh, you can have a read of that DTRs deep tendon reflexes how they work, where you tap the telehammer around L4, yeah, innervated by the femoral nerve, goes up into the sensory afferent neuron here, and it comes in via the motor efferent, goes to the same muscle, and bang, we have a contraction. So it basically tells if this neural loop is working effectively. Different types of reflex hammers yeah, along here. Actually, the original one, which is this one along there, uh, is known as the Taylor or Tomahawk, yeah, and it came out in uh, sorry in 1888. I, I know that by John Madison Taylor. Uh, these are the Queen's hammer. These are the ones I like, the plastic ones, which I'm using here. Um, I just find I seem to get a better response, even though I'm more than happy to use the rest of them. Reflex QR code on here. Have a look, and how we do the lower limb along there. This is the L5. This is the S1. Yeah, and this is Achilles S1 as well. This is the L4. This is the L3. Yeah, with the adductor along this. Uh, Pavinsky reflex, potentially, hopefully it doesn't go up because it'd be an upper, upper motor neuron dis disorder. And again, you can read it in here somewhere. Yeah, so the upper motor neuron lesion basically lives in the spinal cord yeah, or the brain. Obviously, it's related to the central nervous system. And it's outside that. It's obviously a lower motor neuron. So it's um, within uh, the rest of the nervous system, yeah, which is the peripheral. <coughs> okay, case studies, you can read. I talk a little bit about MS, paraplegia, yeah, and Parkinson's, not much, just a little bit along there. Sensory testing, cutaneous nerves, what's a dermatome? But some of these pictures here are amazing. These ones here, done on the model Denise, 
Yeah, you can see them. So this is the cutaneous nerves, which is like the sensory nerve along this area, anterior, posterior. And then the next one is a comparison between the dermatomes along here, yeah, and then the sensory nerves on the opposite side. Um, so great pictures. And coming down, different tools we can use, um, like the neuro tips, yeah, a bit of cotton wool, yeah, light touch, temperature test if you decide to do that, vibration, yeah, using a, a tuning fork. Motor testing, uh, known as a myotome. So basically, um, when I come onto the shoulder in particular, I tend to, to teach my students, we tend to start around the shoulder. I do explain in the book why. Um, because the majority of cervical spine issues is going to be maybe around C5. So it's going to be abduction here, yeah, which is innervated by C5. Yeah, so it's a myotone of C5, but also elbow flexion is a C5 as well. And then you can look at these ones. This is uh, C6 extension, um, elbow extension is C7 and so on. Then you can do a lower limb and then the reflex testing, not reflex, a myotome for the upper limb QR codes. Yeah, and the same in here. This is an interesting one, very simple test, ask a patient a dorsiflex, simply test L4 and L5, and then by asking a patient to plantar flex, is tested mainly S1. And you can do a single leg um, calf raise if you want to. Disc anatomy, yeah, I talk about the disc, we have a nucleus and the annulus, um, how it's innervated, yeah, along the other side of the vertebral nerves. Uh, I'm not sure if they're on this one. Uh, this is more of the, uh, capillaries that supply it, yeah, keep it alive and things like that, yeah, and how it hydrates along here. Different type of disc bulges, sequestered where it breaks off, yeah, like a ruptured disc, a herniated, almost similar sort of thing, yeah, along here. Uh, different types of dermatones to the lower limb. I talk about central disc prolapse, yeah, you can see the central disc call in a, causing a cord equina, uh, where, which obviously causes potentially bowel and bladder issues, um, saddle anesthesia, yeah, imagine you're sitting on a saddle and then you get numbness underneath. Degenerative spine called spondylosis along there. Uh, different types of pain, case study. Cervical spine anatomy. Yeah, along here you can read this is the motion of the cervical spine. A little bit about the cervical plexus again, but I've already mentioned it. Some case studies and then assessment of the cervical um, QR codes for some tests. So Spurlins and Balsalva. Um, where I talk about disc prolapse along here. Uh, facet joint syndromes, yeah, which can lead on to like a, a spondylosis. Uh, neuropathies with the nervous system. So like diabetes, I talk about that quite a bit in here. Yeah, The glove and stock and area vaulted sensation. Uh, I talk about a Bell's palsy, yeah, named after Charles Bell or Sir Charles Bell in 1929. Auxiliary nerve. Uh, basically, innovation to the deltoid around here, uh, which is common in dislocated shoulder. This is a picture of me. So I got a scapula winging, dislocated my shoulder many years ago, kayaking off a waterfall, end up um, damaging the auxiliary nerve. But I think as a result of the trauma, I think it might have damaged the long thoracic nerve as well. Carpal tunnel, I love this picture here, along this area. Uh, you can see that. Uh, these tests are actually, I'm not sure it's my fault, but um, You'll see this says failings and reverse failings. Actually, the other way around. I don't get matters too much. Okay, so this is actually failings test, and this is reverse failings here. Um, I'm not sure if it's my fault or the designer fault, but anyway, it's a little mistake there. Uh, the carpal tunnel, the flexor tendons, you know, superficialis and profundus go through. There is another one called flexor uh, pollicis longus as well, which would be on this side here, and then you've got the median nerve. Uh, Tinnell's test, named after Jules Tinnell, just there. Ulna neuritis, so this is uh, like from the Guillaume Canal, which is between the pisiform bone and the hamate. Uh, the ulna nerve is here, yeah. so it goes through the Guillaume Canal. Um, this is just a Jules test here, or Tunnel test. This is an interesting one. My friend um, in the army, well, I was in the military, so was he. He was in Iraq, and I was many years ago, and he was actually shot and damaged a radial nerve through here, end up with a wrist drop. I talk about foot drop or drop foot on there, common peroneal issue, nerve. Um, case studies here, sciatic nerve into the nerves. Da, da. Um, thoracic outlet syndrome, TOS, different tests, Allen's test, Adson test, Ruse test, you can have a look. It just continues on this, yeah, along there. Some QR codes you can scan. The last one, so, no, it's not, you've got 
two more. So case studies, which is another one. So it's all about case studies now. So you can read, so this is like the intro, swallowing food causes unusual reaction, have a read of that. Yeah, along there, talk about gallbladder, um, how it relates and refers pain, yeah, and so on. If you read my shoulder book, there's a couple of similar images in there. I talk about carcinoma, uh, pancreas tumor, causing like a break of neuritis, along there. Uh, stomach pain or stomach ulcer causing mid thoracic pain. Um, this is Virchow lymph nodes, yeah, causing brachial neuritis again along here because of a swelling as a result of a stomach carcinoma. Uh, and I talk about differences between a arteriosclerosis and a spinal stenosis, yeah, different cause of uh, claudication in the legs from that. Last one, uh, neurodynamic testing. Um, so these are like nerve nerve tests. You can actually use them as a stretch as well. Yeah, like a, not a flossing type, but um, well, you can in some ways by using the foot to dorsi implant the flex, and you can almost like passively just lengthen the nerve as well. So this is like an SLR test with a variation. SLR with cervical reflection, QR codes, femoral nerve reversal of SARGs test. Yeah, you can read about that. Um, this is the typical slump test along here. And then we've got these upper limb tension tests, one for the median nerve, pictures, QR code there. Same for the ulnar nerve um, along here, and obviously the radial nerve as well. A uh, little bit about the conclusion of it. Yeah, a uh, little bit in the appendix. When I talk about the cranial nerves, you can see a table you can use. You've also got some charts you can use and print off. Yeah, copyright free, so it's not a problem on that. And there's the index yeah, on the back. Uh, and there we have, and that's the back of the book. So, I hope you liked uh, the little introduction into the book. Um, you can buy it on Amazon, but if you buy it from my website, www johngibbonsbodymaster.co.uk then I will send you a copy and I will personally sign it for you um, and it's also free postage to the UK only. If you buy it from abroad then please pay for the extra postage cost yeah, because remember it is me that has to pay for that um, and it'll cost me £15 for instance just to send it to uh, the US or Australia so please bear that in mind. Okay Thank you for uh, listening and I hope you enjoy the book.